Hey, welcome back. Grumpy Gunsmith here again. And today I'm going to show you how to make thimbles for your rifle or pistol. Uh, most guns are, today are using a 3 8 inch thimble, but you'll also find occasion to make 5 16 for smaller caliber guns, uh, or even down to a quarter inch. I have three mandrels here that I use, quarter, 5 16 and 3 8 Quarter inch I use a lot for the entry thimbles on some pistols, because the rods taper so much from what you see on the outside to the inside of the stock. 5 16 I'll use for the outside or the front thimble on pistols and small caliber guns. And then 3 8 is what we'll work with today. That's the most common size everybody buys. All right. So you're going to need a few other things. Some scrap brass. Uh, what I use is 30 thousandths thick or 18 gauge. And I buy mine from uh, onlinemetals.com. Uh, then you'll also need a vise. And a propane torch will help too because you're going to need to anneal the brass a couple of times during the manufacture just to keep it soft so it's very pliable. Alright, so let's get to it and see how we make these. Take care. Hang on. Alright, we're going to basically show you how to turn this flat pieces of brass through a series of steps into the thimbles you're going to want for your gun. Not terribly difficult. As you can see it's just a piece bent around into a tube. And these are pieces of brass that are 30 thousandths thick, 18 gauge, and I've already annealed them. And I've got the patterns already, which I will show you those as well, how to all the measurements you need. This is a very typical uh, size for a rear entry thimble on a rifle, 3 8 inch diameter. And then I've got the forward thimble pattern as well. And I'll show you how to make those. Other things you will need is a hammer. I use a small lightweight hammer, like a tack hammer, works good. Got some files here. You only need three, but you know if you've got some small needle files to help clean up detail work, that's fine too. This one is a pillar file, which I live by. Pillar files are great because they have a safe edge, no teeth on both sides. So when you're working up against corners that you don't want to file and widen out, say, in this area here that we're going to file, and you don't want it to go further, Pillar files work great because you can get right up against that edge and it won't go any further. Now even this flat file that I use to help clean up after the pillar file, I've already ground all the teeth off one side making it a safe edge. And this smoother cut file will be good, especially being wider, to help get in there and clean up the width of these. You work to one edge, flip it over so you got a safe edge every time you come to the edge on the uh, flat areas. Another thing you'll need of course is a mandrel. This is a 3 8 inch mandrel. You can get a piece of 3 8 inch round rod down at the hardware store. If you want to make 5 16 get a 5 16 dowel and I've even got quarter inch because sometimes I make very small ones for kids guns or pistol entry thimbles are quite often smaller. Another thing I use and you don't need this, but it's a filing jig. This is a neat little piece, and I will show you how this works, and I will explain uh, towards the end of the th uh, video what I did to make this. And if you plan to make a lot of thimbles, it's a handy little tool to spend time making. All right, so let's get started. So this is the basic dimensions you want for the pattern that we're going to use to make the thimbles. Uh, this will make the, the rear entry thimble. This will be the tab that goes across the back of the stock. And all you need is this part of it for the forward thimbles. Alright, so these are the dimensions. 2 inches, 1 and 5 eighths, 3 eighths of an inch, 
here which will become the tabs that go into the stock. This one has a two inch tail. You can make this really any length you want. Two inches is good average. And it's three quarters of an inch wide. Alright, so if you want to write all that down you can put a hold on the video and draw your own little pattern if you want. Alright, to start off with get your patterns that you made. This is the one I showed you in the uh, drawing on the board and you have to take note also that this has rounded corners right in here so that when you bend this is the part that's going to be the radius section going from the tube up into the tab that goes on top of the stock. And I've also made one without the tang portion and I've notched it where I want the bends to be and I even went one step further and made this piece that is the width that I want the tube and then there's your tabs that will be folded and this little pattern here will come in real handy I've got a bunch of these pieces already cut already annealed and you just lay it in there and inscribe both sides and that gives you your tabs and the width of your tube so you can mark as many as you want to make and you can also use this for the entry thimbles too just line it up on there And the next step will be to go ahead and bend these tabs over, which we'll do in the vise with a hammer. So let me let me set up for that and we'll show you how that's done. Alright, so got my scribed lines and my vise. And what you want to do is set this down into the vise right to that scribed line. Clamp it. And I start to bend with my fingers. And finish off with a hammer. I use metal hammer instead of something soft because I want a good sharp corner there. So I'm actually hammering along that bend there to get a good sharp bend. So we'll flip it around, do the other side. step to get the curvature that you want. I've got a 3 8 inch dowel. You can get one from the hardware store. And I've tapered the end, which you need, you know, don't need to, but it just makes it easier to get it in and out. And we'll open the vise up. And then simply drive this down into there. You can see I've got the legs pointing down and we'll just drive this down into it making sure you're lined up nice and parallel with the bends. drive it in until the jaws are open just enough for the clearance of the brass and the bar and then you get end up with a nice U-shape 
and now we're going to bend this on around into the final shape and to do that we insert the rod again place this now so that the bends are on the bottom and lining this up as close as you can so that everything is going to squeeze together at the same time you just start squeezing the tabs together make you want to move it as close to the tube as you can get it when you're squeezing do it nice and tight and at this point I'll check the bar against my vise and see that I don't need to bend it a little bit because you can tap one end or the other to simply get this nice and straight and there we got a tube there you go so not terribly hard what I'll also do at this point you can see there's a bit of spring in it and what I might do is take my pliers hold it nice and tight together and heat this up and anneal it one more time while it's in the rolled form and that gets rid of any of that tension that built in it while I was rolling it around then the next step of course will be to file it any way you want to or you can leave them plain like this and I'll show some of that filing work here uh, in just a minute Now for the entry thimble, it's basically the same thing. I've got my lines scribed, and you want to be very uh, cautious about getting the tang very centered between these two. Otherwise, it'll bend up in the wrong fashion, like this one did. You can see it's just a bit off. Um, but if this happens to you and that tang is all wonky, just cut it off and you get another forward thimble not a big deal but let's try this one see how we bend these thimbles especially on pistols uh, were uh, different in diameter they're larger at the muzzle end smaller at the entry because ramrods on those are very tapered uh, some of the entry pipes were as small as one quarter of an inch diameter as opposed to maybe five sixteenths or the usual three eighths we think of today And you can do that by simply making different mandrels and figuring out how much you need to wrap around, which is going to be a little bit of your geometry again. Now I'm going to pre bend the tang a little bit. get it back so I don't bend as much at the tang too much. I'm going to get back on the corner of the vise here and do the final clamping. Flip it over. And finish the fold. making sure I get as close to the bottom of the diameter as I can get when I do the final clamp like that check for straightness now what do we do about the tang 
it's a straight piece right now and what we want is a bulge for the uh, entry hole where the wood is above the actual drilled hole. So what I do in this case is I've got this held in the vise, the mandrels in place, and I've got a piece of tubing here. It's actually brass tubing. It's three quarters of an inch outside and three eighths of an inch inside, which I had to do by actually putting a sleeve in there. But However you do it, it's fine. You can get a short piece and drill a 3 8 inch hole through it. Uh, but this is what we're going to use now to make this step. I bring this back so that the tang is fully exposed off the edge. And I'm going to simply to do a little pre-bending here, get this above the mandrel. And I'm going to drive this down onto it. And I'm watching down here. Until I'm hitting just in front of the tabs. I can see this lifting up nicely, getting that bulge going. And I've got too much of the mandrel sticking out. I don't want to hit the end of the mandrel and mushroom it any more than I have to. So I'll loosen it, pull it back. until I get that other mandrel down nice and tight. Then you can hammer the tang down. getting it centered and a nice bend to it that will match the stock. And you can see how we get that nice bulge, nice smooth bend here, good bulge in it, tang is long and it's fairly well centered. Now we just gotta take all this apart. So there we've got the rough tang. And you can clean this up. You can see that it don't have the straightest lines there. Put it in the vise again and just tap here and there. want that tang to be in line parallel with the tube so you may have to do a little bending here and there and these corners you may need to work back down a little bit and that's easy enough to do you can use your mandrel place this right over the edge
if you want to, you can actually make a wooden block too. That's just the radius of this that you can drive this into to get it all nice and smooth. Uh, I generally try and keep this fairly annealed. I'll go back and anneal these again, like I said, to clamp these uh, uh, tabs together. And of course anneal the tang again and I can do more shaping of it after I've got it inleted into the wood. So that's pretty much it for that. Uh, again, the next step will be to do the file work and I'll show you how we do that.